So we've got a pretty good idea about the things we want to do from a pre-swing standpoint as well as a mental standpoint when hitting the driver. But let's talk about a couple of drills that you can do. They're great for the driver, but they're just really good drills in general as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the swoosh drill, the upside down driver swoosh drill. Here's the idea. We're going to hold the club from the wrong end, from the, from the shaft end. Now, I'm not putting my hand down here on the driver head. It's going to be on the shaft. You could do this drill also with a golf club without a head on it, but who has one of those? So we're just going to grip the club upside down and we're going to go ahead and make a swing and listen for the, the whoosh sound that the shaft makes. Okay. Now, I don't know if you could hear it, but I could hear the louder whoosh noise there took place back in this area and that's not what we want so we want the whoosh noise to be where do you think down where the ball would be near this rubber tee or a little bit forward of that all right so let's just first uh, take a look and, and see what happened with that first whoosh why did that happen i don't know if you can hear that so that's that's my hands creating this loud whoosh noise but it's too soon we want the whoosh noise, the loudest part of, the, of the, the loudest part and the fastest part of the golf swing to be ahead of the ball. So I'm going to quiet my hands. Okay. And I'm going to just let myself turn through with relaxed hands. And what's happening is I can hear the louder whoosh noise now out where the ball would be. Oh, I like that one. So the better job I do of relaxing my hands and letting my golf swing be this turning through of our shoulders and our hips. Well, now let's see my hands are way ahead of that, of that imaginary club head down here. And what's going to happen is I'm going to release then my wrists right about there through more of an impact zone. And if we're going to hit a driver, the ball will be more forward. So it'll be more that way. Okay. So practice this. You know, I would say just a couple of minutes at a time, we don't want to practice so long so that we get tired of what we're doing and we fall into bad habits. So just maybe do this for, for, for three or four minutes at a time. And we want to take our time in between our reps and really concentrate on it. Okay, and I can really hear that whoosh noise down there. This is going to help you use your lever system better, use your arms and club better, and get you a little bit less likely to have this going on in your swing. Now the reality is when you first start doing these drills, your drill looks one way, and then the actual thing you do with the golf club looks another way. But gradually things start to get better. And it's amazing how if you do just get a little teeny bit better in your technique from doing a drill, you're going to see, oh, the ball fight's going to be better. You'll be more decisive. You'll have more confidence. It's going to help you so much off the tee. Now the next drill we're going to talk about is another drill that's going to help get those hands out of the swing. And that's a heavy club drill or a two club drill. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to grab just a couple of, you know, mid range irons here, get you back down in there. Okay. Uh, when we do this, by the way, grip the clubs in a way so that your iron heads have some space in between them. That way they're not clacking against each other. And I'm going to grip these clubs down here by the grip. Now, they don't fit perfectly in my hands. They make these big wh heavy whippy clubs and, and all that, but this is something you, you already have. Is you already have a couple golf clubs. And what I want to do is make a nice normal slow swing with these two clubs. This is nice because it stretches out your muscles, okay? But it's also great because of the weight of these clubs it's easier to swing the clubs with a good golf swing. Notice how when I get started, I kind of push my shoulders through a little bit. I turn towards the target a little bit. I'm keeping those shafts right out in front of my chest. So right here you can see the shafts are in front of my chest and right there the shafts are in front of my chest. So I'm gonna get turn a little bit this way through, turn those shoulders back. What's happening is I'm teaching myself a one piece takeaway. This seems kind of natural with these heavy clubs. This boy, I'll tell you what, that's a workout. So if you, if you get right here in your setup and you just pick those hands up, 
you can feel the weight of those clubs. So we're gonna, just going to let our arms hang, turn through a little bit, back and through. Not something you have to do hard, but this is going to really help out a lot. Let me grab that driver again here. What the heck, we'll hit a ball, right? So these drills are going to help us with maintaining this nice one piece takeaway. So you can see my shoulders are creating this backswing, not my hands. You know, the two club drills are going to help with that. Now, when it comes to actually getting good speed and a good lever system through impact, that whooshing drill is going to help. Let's try that. All right, pretty good. All right, so there's a couple of drills for you. The upside down driver drill for the whoosh, the whoosh after the ball, and then two clubs together, swing them nice and slowly. You're not in a weightlifting contest, but do those drills. They'll help with your driver as well as every club in your bag. Okay, confidence. You know, somebody said once, or probably a lot of people, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So if you decide when you walk up to that tee that you're going to hit a bad shot, that you're going to be in trouble, well, guess what you will be. If you walk up to that short putt and you think you're going to miss it, you will miss it. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to hit a good tee shot every time, no matter who you are, and you're not going to always make putts. So what we've got to do is we've got to think positively about what we want to accomplish, accept the outcome, and then move on. The first step in this is a really good pre-shot routine. This is going to make a huge difference to you if you work on it. So in a good pre-shot routine, what's going to happen is we will put ourselves in an environment mentally that we're familiar with. That the, recommend, the recommended routine would be something to the effect of standing back behind your ball, looking straight down the target line, picturing your target in your mind where you want that ball to start. Now, if you draw the ball, you're going to start a little right of your target. If you fade it, you're going to start a little bit to the left, but you're going to pick out exactly where you want that ball to go. Then you're going to walk around to the side of your golf ball. Again, glance up at the target or even stare at the target. And what I highly recommend is as you get ready to hit your shot, maybe have one physical swing that you want to work on or think about, but the other thing you want to think about is what's going to happen to the ball as it flies through the air. The real benefit of this pre-shot routine though is you start to condition yourself about what you'll be thinking about in a situation as opposed to thinking about how bad the outcome might be. Okay, so to wrap it up, the things with the driver we want to be thinking about. Number one, tee height. We're going to tee that ball up so that half of the ball, the, the equator of the ball is right on that top scoring line. The second thing is ball position. We're going to set up so that that ball is positioned more forward in our stance, right about on the logo of our shirt. And then the third thing that's so important with hitting this driver, do the work that it requires to have confidence. Use your pre-shot routine, Practice hitting balls in groups of 10 so you can keep track of out of 10 balls that you hit off the practice tee, what percentage of those will be in the fairway. So don't be afraid of the driver. Do use a risk reward calculation to make sure that the club will pay off and make sure that you get in lots of practice.